Hello and welcome to the Christmas edition of the Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. And um, so, how do you know it's the Christmas edition? Well, it is indeed the week before Christmas and the sparkly reindeer has made an appearance. So yes, um, the Christmas accoutrements are out, as they say. So yes, indeed, it is the Christmas episode of the show. And as uh, history dictates, um, it's always a special uh, episode of the show at Christmas and I think today's episode of the show will hopefully uh, follow in the tradition. Um, but firstly, as per usual, big thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode, well, multiple episodes of the show, uh, well not last week's, the week before, that, episodes of the show, um, commented, liked, all that kind of stuff. Yes, they were a little controversial and uh, uh, well, anyway, you know what? Well, <laughs> I'm not going to get through an entire year without being slightly controversial. I mean, you know, um, it happens from time to time, shall we say? But anyway, we're not going to dwell on the past. We're looking at today's episode of the show, um, and you know, uh, I think there was a comment uh, on an episode of the show um, not so long ago about uh, saying, "Isn't it time you did a cognac episode of the show?" and um, it. And I said, well, yes, I'd love to do a cognac episode of the show, but I don't get cognac samples very often because our cognac range has been pretty much set in stone ever since, well, ever since you know, for the last 20 odd years. And, you know, the customers like the, 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 the cognacs that we do. And it's, it's very difficult to bring in a new cognac producer because, um, because like I said, you know, there's the sort of the core of our range, the two producers that we, that we, we stock, um, people love their cognacs. Um, and generally speaking, you know, throughout the entire year, you sell a handful of bottles but of course come this time of year you know everybody wants you know their port and their cognac and uh, you know port the cognac sales probably jump by about 70 or 80 percent you know um and they go well, well last year i came in and i had had a lovely bottle of x's uh vsop and i think i'll treat myself to another bottle of that because i love their style and well you know can't blame them for that um but Anyway, so back in November, I got an email from uh, from a rep um, who used to work for another company and uh, knew that uh, we were who we were and said that I'm now working for this company called uh, Hermitage uh, Cognacs, and um, essentially Hermitage Cognacs are point of a better word, an independent bottling company operating in Cognac. Now, as you know, Cognac is generally dominated by the big houses, Remy and Courvoisier and Hennessy and what, and what have you. Um, but there are a lot of individual producers and, and, and here we have a sort of a company that, that, that basically specializes in so sourcing small par parcels and producing a, a, a quite a large range of vintage dated bottlings. Now, a lot of cognac producers don't bother with that. There's no necessity to. Their age statement bottlings are where they're at. They don't need to go through all of the hoops and hoopla of uh, uh, red tape to sort of keep the casks and bottle them as, as single vintage, uh, single vintage dated casks. I mean, the Armagnac producers do, but that's more of a selling point for them. But um, so um, it's quite unusual. Now, if you're an independent bottler in Scotland, obviously you, you, you're sourcing these casks, and there is a lot of transparency. Certainly on your labelling, you will have things like, you know, the, the, if you're allowed to, the distillery name, the sort of uh, the, the distillation dates, etc., etc. Um, cognac it doesn't seem to quite work that way. There's a lot of opacity, and I think a lot of that is to do with the mystique that the cognac industry would like to project. They like to project this, this idea of luxury and 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 history and the fact that you know um, all of these companies and you know have their own vineyards and they distill their own spirit and all that kind of stuff which we know is not actually true and some of the marketing is just absolutely well one that came my way and it's nothing to do with Hermitage Cognacs uh, recently uh, is just an absolute classic it goes a hundred years after the X brothers created a cognac that defied convention. Ooh, defied, apparently. Um, at, with its ethereal lightness and elegance, we celebrate a new and transformative creation. Good God. 
Um, <laughs> X remains now as then the purest expression of the noble terroir, a grand champagne, uh, and the purest expression of the timeless vision of X and X. Um, oh, marketing sensors are just going, go, you know, um, see what I mean? I mean, it's, it's all about this kind of image that they want to and 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 like i said it's very very opaque and i mean there are some houses uh delaman for example is a classic example that own no vineyards whatsoever or certainly they never did and so they were reliant on working with these small producers um to you know buy the spirit and then bottle it you know and i would love to see more transparency in the cognac industry you know um but it's never going to happen but anyway, that's that's, you know, uh, neither here nor there. T today we're looking at um, the, a selection of the vintage uh, dated bottlings uh, that have been uh, put together by um, Hermitage Cognac. They also do some age statement bottlings, but like I said, we're, we're looking at, the, uh, at these vintages. And uh, um, as I have seem to have an inordinate number in front of me, I think I'm going to cut the waffle a little bit short. So let's just take a look at uh, the line. Right, okay, so first bottling we'll be looking at is uh, a 10 year old. Uh, so all of these bottlings are from Grand Champagne and uh, like I said they're probably from all different producers and you know whether they did actually rummage around in, in the uh, you know the sort of blackened cellars and cognac to find these these uh, the, these gems I honestly couldn't tell you there may well be some truth in that there may well be some fact that it was like you know doing a deal over over a lunch possibly in a in a in a pub maybe I don't know like I said all of this is all a little bit opaque but we're not really too concerned about that it's the juice that we're concerned about so like i said uh this is a 10 year old it was distilled in 2008 bottled in 2018 and bottled at 45 percent now this is nice um you know it uh, cognac producers do seem to be like rum producers wedded to the whole 40 percent abv which you know really they should be moving away from you should be bottling them at, at, at what is you know the ideal ABV and it's nice to see that that is indeed what um, Hermitage cognacs are doing and also the other interesting thing is that all of these cognacs have remained in the cask until they were bottled which again is quite unusual because with the older cognacs you, you think well you know that's been in the cask for 50 60 odd years that's going to get a little bit woody you know best get it out of there but no these are all remained in the cask Next bottling we'll be looking at, this particular one, is uh, a 14 year old. Uh, this is uh, distilled in 2005, bottled uh, in 2019, and this one is bottled at 40%, so I'm assuming that that was selected for that particular uh, bottling. Next one we're looking at is a 19 year old. This is from 1995. It was bottled in 2014 and bottled at 43%. Next bottling, we're moving up the ages. This is a 30 year old, bit of a jump, but well, you know, um, that's uh, the, the way these things go. Uh, now, uh, this was distilled in 1987 bottled in 2017 and bottled at 47 percent now i think from what i read uh from the literature that they kindly sent me this the producer is chez richon um, don't know them um but i'm guessing that, again they're one of these smaller producers that maybe just distills and then you know supplies the larger houses i mean that because basically at the end of the day not every producer has got the, the wherewithal to you know bottle their own spirit and you know go through all the marketing and all that and it's just easier to sort of contract to still and supply the big boys you know it's money at the end of the day uh, and you can't blame them for that uh, and then we're moving on this is and this is this is where where one gets a little frisson of excitement when you start to taste spirits that are actually older than you know, my, my age and uh, well they need to be pretty old mm. um, so this was from 1960 uh, this is a 55 year old spirit it was distilled like I said in 1960 bottled in 2015 and again bottled at 47% and we haven't finished yet and we have not this is from 1948 
This is 59 years old, and yes, that is older than me. Uh, <laughs> it was, like I said, distilled in 1948, bottled in 2007 at 44.4%, which I'm guessing is probably the natural ABV of this particular cask. And I think from, again, reading about the company, I think that that's what they do try to achieve. Uh, more or less certainly with the the very older spirits I and mean, there's no need to sort of like you know cut that with any any water it's just it's fallen to that naturally leave it bottle it you know and um, anyway on to the very last one now this is would you believe it 72 years old and yes that is a lot older than me um so this was distilled in 1923 uh, i mean you know talk about sort of a a piece of history you know that this is something that you know very few people will ever get the opportunity to sort of taste and you know I am incredibly grateful to Hermitage Cognacs for you know allowing me to sort of you know taste something of this uh, ilk uh, it is like I said 72 years old it was distilled in 1923 bottled in 1996 and 43% I mean that's impressive really when you think about it it's that it's pretty much there uh, rather than sort of falling to well below that but anyway um, we will obviously talk about price as we go along because as you know cognacs being a luxury uh, luxury product are by and large not cheap um, but anyway um, I think that's a, a, enough waffle let's kick off with the baby then shall we Right, okay, so this is the 2008. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? It's young, it's fresh, it's elegant, it's grapey. There's a, a little bit of marzipan, a little bit of um, oxidised apple. It's got a lovely sweetness. There's a the, 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 the gritty French oak tannins, certainly noticeable, um, and certainly are giving me a little bit of a little bit of coffee, a little bit of cinnamon. Um, that is very impressive. I mean, you know, 10 years old in reality is relatively young for, for a cognac. Um, although, you know, you can bottle, this could be legally bottled as an XO, you know, uh, which is just madness in my personal opinion. Um, but, you know, the, the, they're, they're not going to change. Um, and, you know, this is why so many... Uh, producers you know like to try and at least give you an indication of uh, how old the spirits are in their, their XOs but anyway um that's a lovely nose beautifully balanced elegant fresh um but it's got some lovely depth to it let's see what that's like Now that's showing a lot more maturity on the palate. I'm getting a lot more of the darker oxidised fruit as opposed to the sort of slightly appley, grapely, grape, grapely, grapey, fresher uh, spirit notes. Um, it's got some lovely dark honey, some dark spices, cinnamon, toffee, pepper possibly. A um, little bit of, of a, an orange citrus twang just in the in in the finish, um, and. It's retailing for about £109, which for a 10-year-old cognac is, 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 I don't get, I don't understand the pricing here because the next bottling we'll be looking at, which is 14, is only 60 quid. Don't quite understand that. Yes, that's, that's beautiful spirit, but I don't understand why I would have to sell that for considerably more. And the point is that, you know, customers are going to say exactly the same, say, well, why is that younger one more expensive? And you're going to go, well... I have no idea. But anyway, um, leaving aside that sort of pricing issue, that, that spirit is just absolutely delightful. Right, okay, so let's move on to the 2005. Uh, so like I said, this is 14 years old and I believe comes from the producer Shea Richon, um, but I could well be wrong. But anyway, um, let's see what the nose goes. Now, that's a little heavier, the spirit character. It's got a little bit more, it's probably slightly more aromatic. It's less grapey, less fresh. It's more oxidised. 
uh, apple, apricot, some lovely uh, oak notes. Um, that is a really robust nose, and you know, for, for 60 quid, that is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, God, the aromatics, I mean, you know, I've had, I have had these in the glass for quite, well, for quite a few minutes, <laughs> uh, because, I mean, obviously, as you know, it just, cognacs and, and certainly uh, spirits in general just, you know, um, uh, work nicely once they've been aerated a little bit, and that's fabulous. That really is very, very impressive. Let's see what that's like. A little fresher on the palate, still really elegant. Um, lots of dried apple, apricot, a little bit of cinnamon. It's a slight floral note just coming through on the mid palate, sort of not quite acacia, but sort of a slightly musty sort of floral note. Um, the oak sort of starts to come in on, on the finish, um, but the dried fruit, the dried apple, the apricot just lingers and it's just got such a lovely softness to it. Um, it's almost a taut mineral note as well on the finish. And, and, and yes, that marketing waffle, you know, about the sort of like the terroir of Grand Champagne is, 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 is absolutely spot on. I mean, you know, um, that certainly has a sort of a, a lovely minerality to it. Uh, and like I said, very different from the previous bottling, um, or, and you know, leaving aside the the slight difference in age, you can just see the difference, obviously, between the, these two pro different producers. So, um, sixty quid, hmm, that's really impressive. <laughs> Right, okay, so let's move on to the 1995. So, like I said, this is um, 19 years old um, and retail price is going to be somewhere in the region of about 97 quid. Um, sort of 97 to 99, that kind of region, which, you know, again, you know, 19, 20 year old cognac, you know, that's pretty much about the price of them these days. Um, and yes, they have been going up quite steeply over the last few years, as we said. Anyway, let's see what the nose is going, giving us. Lovely, dense, dark, all floral. Got a lovely dried fruit character. Slightly plummy um, with, again, baked apple, apricot. Touch of cinnamon, some... Getting a little bit more of the older oak notes coming in, a bit more sort of like walnut, a bit more softer spices. But right, right in the sort of like, just in the background, there's that slight freshness. It's sort of almost kind of, almost green citrus, almost kind of green gauge, green apple. Um, just showing that the spirit is just sort of like um, wonderfully balanced and, and probably could go on aging for sort of like for decades. Um, and it's just, it's just a delightful aromatic nose. It's got the sort of, you know, a, a, a lovely sort of uh, maturity, but just showing an edge of freshness. Um, mm, see what that's like. Kicks off with a little bit more oak. I'm getting a little bit more sort of vanilla and light tannins. And then in comes that sort of slightly darker, plummy, sweet fruit. A little bit of apricot, apple, a touch of cinnamon, pepper. Um, and then it really starts to get going. I mean, the length on that is really impressive. And I'm getting almost cocoa, possibly. Um, and then some floral notes, some honeysuckle. Um, a little bit of almond, um, that is stunning, I mean that is absolutely stunning, the length and the complexity 
uh, and the progression is just absolutely fantastic. Um, and yes, yes, indeed, I have well, put my hand in, in Gauntley's pocket and purchased these and, and I haven't had the opportunity to pop, pop them on the website yet, but I will get them on the website. I mean, um, literally only took delivery of them uh, yesterday. So um, I'm, I'm more than happy to sort of recommend that. And uh, one of the other nice things about the range is that, again, going back to the whole thing with cognac and a luxury product and the packaging and all that kind of stuff it all adds significant money to the end product you know Lalique decanters and you know mahogany boxes and all that kind of stuff what I love about these this particular range is simple bottles simple bottles simple labels yes you know with the the, the sort of like the, the older expressions um a uh, slightly more substantial uh, card box but you know it's just a case of saying look understatement here juice in the bottle that's the important thing we're not sort of adding on another 50 or 60 quid putting it in a, a decanter and all that kind of stuff that i yeah i really appreciate that i think that what they're trying to do is they're saying look we want you to buy the product we want you to um, experience these cognacs and we're doing it uh, as a good a price as we physically can do so and that i think has got to be applauded so um but coming back to that Oh, oh, that's good. <sighs> Okay, so let's move on to the 1987. So this is indeed 30 years old, and again, I believe comes from Chez Richon. Uh, let's see what the nose gives us on this end. Now, the maturity is really ramped up here. It's it's quite dense and woody. Um, Loads of mature oxidised apple, fig, walnut, bit of cedar, um, pepper, ginger. But oh, wow! That I mean, there's some real fruit there, and it's almost kind of old, mature, almost tropical. Um, that is a absolutely stunning nose. Um, and again, there's that slight floral note there in the background, sort of cherry blossom, apple blossom, possibly. Um, and it's just the balance, the balance between the spirit and the wood notes is just absolutely divine. Yes, it's £166, but, you know, that is indeed the sort of, the current sort of price for a spirit of this kind of age. And But when you think about it, you know, this is a 30-year-old cognac, and then you take a 30 year old Macallan for argument's sake or a 30 year old Glenlivet or something like that and you know well I don't know what you're going to be paying for those but you're going to be paying probably double quite comfortably double 166 quid um, so you know I think that kind of puts it into some kind of context and um, let's see what it passes like It's a bit taut, oaky, but not oak, vanilla. It's it's oaky, old oak, um, old French tannins. I mean, obviously, I think the ABV at forty-seven percent is just kind of emphasising that the the, the sort of uh, the, the the oak character. Um, but it's got some lovely, juicy, oxidised apples, some pear, um, apricot. Um, again. Plenty of, of, of wood notes, sort of uh, walnut, cinnamon, ginger, um, touch of macerated orange again, slight floralness right on the finish. It just sort of as that sort of mature oxidized character just starts to dissipate. I get the, the floral uh, and, and uh, slight citric notes coming through, a little bit of minerality again. Um, it's a little drying on the finish, I'll give you that, but it's a really impressive spirit. It's not like it's kind of sucking the moisture out of my, 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 my cheeks. Um, and, and there is, like I said, there's a sort of a slight, a little bit more emphasis on the, uh, the wood. Um, but it is just supremely balanced and that is just absolutely stunning. 
Right, okay, so let's move on to the 1960s. So 55 years old. Let's see what those give us on this end, shall we? Oh, that's just got such a beautiful nose. Um, rich, full, dark pepper, cinnamon, sweet coffee, again, oxidised apple, baked apple, dark marzipan, dark chocolate. It's a dark nose, this, it has to be said. It is, oh, really intense, but it's got a, a little bit of violet, a little, again, a slight floral note. But the overriding sort of feeling is is almost kind of savoury, I suppose. Like I said, baked apple, dark fruits, dark chocolate. Um, oh, that's just stunning. Dark coffee, roasted coffee. It is just... Now, yeah, this is not cheap. This is, like I said, about 517 to 520 pounds a bottle. Um, but, oh my word, I mean, that's just... Mm. I mean, yeah, it's. I, I remember sort of when I was in in the region many many years ago, uh, tasting at um, another producer, and we, we we tasted the the bottling called the Parody, uh, which was made up of, of now, if memory serves me correct, um, pre eighteen seventy uh, spirit along with sort of early nineteen hundred spirit, and it was just one of those experiences where it's just you know you put your nose in the glass and it was it just defied tasting notes it was so complex there was literally everything going on there and this is probably not quite there but oh my god this is complex I mean there is so much happening it is just oh absolutely stunning let's see what the parts are with a little bit more citrus it's got a slightly lighter palette I mean it's still quite dark so still lots of um, uh, oxidized and, and baked apple and and um, sp you know chocolatey spice and cinnamon and pepper um, but wow that's got a real vibrancy I mean you know if I'm that good when I get if I'm that vibrant and good when I get to 55 I will be more than happy um, stunning length and again you know emphasis on the wood getting the coffee coffee almost coffee bean rather than sort of coffee powder um dark chocolate dark spices uh, i mean that is just uh, unbelievable i mean yeah all right you know you, you're probably having to sort of you know sell your car or your liver or whatever for a bottle of that but um you know oh i mean you it's just a it's just drinking you know a, a little bit of history and uh, like i said um to um uh, to uh, hermitage cognacs i'm just so grateful uh for the the opportunity to taste these and uh, I, you know i'm hoping you guys you know will think well i've got to have a bottle of that um anyway so because <laughs> I, I bought a bottle of it and it's on the shelf so i need to sell it you know and <gasps> Right, okay, so moving on to the 1948, you know, I mean, just think about what was happening in 1948, you know, I mean, the world was a considerably different place to what it is now. Um, but anyway, 44.4% ABV, so I'm guessing the natural ABV. Uh, let's see what the nose gives us. Now, not quite so dark as the, uh, the 1960, it's got more lightness. I mean, one would say it has an ethereal character. Um, no, I'm, I'm, it has a gorgeous um, delicacy, um, slightly herbal as well. I'm getting more herbally dried fruits, uh, baked apple, violets, citrus peel, dried citrus peel, ginger, cinnamon. Oh my God, that's incredible. It's it. It, it has complexity, it has depth, you know, there is no doubt about this. Um, yes, it is between 778 and eight, 780 pounds a bottle, but my God, it's stunning. It is, 
it, again it's got depth it's got lightness it's got elegance um i mean you know Grand Champagne Cognac really does not come a lot better than this, it has to be said. Um, let's see what the parts like. That just has a, a delicacy, a lightness, the citric notes are just sort of like all always there um yes it's got that sort of dried fruit rancio uh again a little edging towards the herbalness not getting quite so much you know oak spices as i would expect of something of this age because it just has this lightness to it this elegance this delicacy um there is a little bit of marzipan on on the finish a little bit of vanilla um a little bit of dusty sort of dried spice but it's all about the sort of the the, the minerality the citrus um and the sort of like the, the the slight light oxidized fruit i mean that is just almost as light as a daisy and that is 59 years old you know and unbelievable i mean i was expecting you know more darkness more dark fruit more sort of wood spice that kind of thing and, and and it's just thrown me a complete and utter curveball i mean that is just oh unbelievably good and finally we're on to the 1923 i mean 1923 you know i mean all right yes we are talking about between 960 and a thousand pounds for a bottle of this um so i mean that little dribble alone is well i hate to think how much that's <laughs> cost but um let's see what the nose gives us again we're back in that sort of slight savory kind of uh, area sort of um and, and and again back to the darker slightly woodier character um walnut dark raisins almost you know almost dark grape um oh, the layers on that are just unbelievable dark honey pepper cinnamon again touch of citrus a little bit of almost kind of sort of orange tangerine possibly um green apple skin i mean Oh my God, this is just, just absolutely to die for. I mean, this is absolutely stunning. I mean, I could, I could sniff this all day. I mean, it is just so complex. I mean, there was, there's probably more going on there than I'm really giving it credit for. Um, and, well, you'd have to buy a bottle to find out, really, wouldn't you? Um, and, um, oh, it's just got that it just reeks of age but you know it's not anywhere near death at all i mean this has just got vibrancy and elegance and you know oh so the parts like rich elegant delicate again the, the words ethereal do come to mind but it's not quite so floral it's more darker fruits it's baked apple again and um wood spice chocolate it's a sort of waxy citric note that kind of runs through it and again earth and a slight savory slight herbal note um silky tannins i mean it is just unbelievable um touch of cocoa powder it's nutty as well i'm getting sort of maybe almost macadamia nut i guess almond um but but sort of old almond we're not talking sort of you know um sort of vanillary almond it's sort of maybe more almond skin possibly um yes the finish does have a sort of a little bit of a dryness but my god that still retained that sort of lovely fruit um the, the oxidized baked apple kind of fruit and then it's just lingering i mean that is just absolutely unbelievable <gasps> i mean that is just absolutely gorgeous and, and well so bloody well should be for, for a thousand odd pound a bottle um but oh 
what a way to finish the year. Well, I won't finish the year, but oh, what a way to finish the show. Ooh. Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show. Firstly, again, a big, big thank you to Hermitage Cognacs for the samples for today's episode of the show. Um, very, very much appreciated, and hopefully, uh, uh, I've done them. Um, I've done them justice. Uh, so, um, the first bottling we looked at today was the uh, the two thousand and eight. Um, lovely cognac. Uh, certainly, more complexity than you would possibly expect from a ten, a ten year old cognac. But don't get the pricing. Can't understand that whatsoever. Um, the the next bottling, the uh, 2005, um, lovely balance between the sort of the mature uh, notes of, of, of baked apple and that kind of thing, with you know just that lovely sort of hint towards the sort of like the the, the youthful um, freshness, uh, just an all round sort of lovely uh, cognac. The uh, 1995, yep, yeah, again just. Just stunning. I mean, sort of like you know, um, dark dried fruits. Uh, you know, all all the classic sort of elements uh, that you would want from uh, a um, a sort of a, a, a cognac of that age. And again, you know, I think pretty pretty well priced. Um, On to the, uh, the the thirty year old, the nineteen eighty seven. Um, again beautiful you know quite woody um but not sort of you know dried out and sort of overly woody yeah yes there was a lot of um you know wood characters sort of like the spices and the chocolate and that kind of thing but you know plenty of um sort of baked apple and 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 fruit to basically balance that up so that was uh, again quite exceptional um the um uh, onto the um, oh, fuck's sake right okay so let's sum today's episode of the show up um, firstly the 2008 yes lovely cognac probably a little bit more complexity than you ex generally expect from a cognac of that kind of age um, wonderfully fresh and floral but I don't understand the pricing of that whatsoever um yeah anyway but great spirit uh on to the 2005 um yes again starting to get that sort of like slightly more mature sort of baked fruit uh, baked apple kind of character but still retaining that slight sort of you know freshness that slight sort of aromatic sort of freshness of uh, of the um uh that was found in this in, in in the younger spirit so again spot on absolutely gorgeous uh, on moving on to the uh, 1995 again dense dark floral um, again sort of just a really good complex cognac and certainly worth the uh, worth the price tag um, the 87 I mean oh, just stunning I mean you know darker denser woodier uh, but again really well balanced plenty of of that sort of grippy french oak and you know it, it just kind of said 30 years old to me it's you know um but you know it was certainly not overly woody and overly dried out it was just you know really quite impressive and talking of impressive on to the um the 1960 uh i mean you know again just superbly balanced uh, cognac and yes not exactly cheap but um, you wouldn't expect it would you really I suppose um, and the the 1948 um, not quite as dark as the 1960 it's kind of like sort of I wouldn't say through a curveball but it was sort of a lighter more elegant I mean and yes the word ethereal which is probably overly used in cognac terms did spring to mind I mean it was just an absolutely stunning bottling and Finally, the the 1923, which was undoubtedly the star of the show. But the nice thing about all of these particular cognacs is that they all have their individuality. They're all interesting in their own right, and they're all, I think, with the obviously with the exception of the the 2008, absolutely worth the price tag. Yes, you know, 72 year old spirit is going to be expensive. There's no doubt about that, and you know. 
us mere mortals are never going to be able to afford that and I know there's a number of you guys will probably never have the opportunity to taste something of that kind of uh, um, age and, and, and just gorgeousness. Um, so but take it from me, it is indeed gorgeous and if you do get the opportunity then savour it and I certainly have. So um, like I said again, really big thank you to uh, Hermitage Cognac. So um, that's the Christmas edition wrapped up. Like, like I said, I think you'll agree it was indeed a bit of a spectacular tasting. So um, until the next episode, which will probably be the last one before uh, we get to the new year and don't we all want to see the back of this this year it has to be said um, so until then um, have a great Christmas uh, I hope you uh, will have some great drams over the festive period and um, yeah let me know um, so until then good afternoon and good dramming <laughs>